Good morning. I almost didn't get here this morning. It was like Noah and the ark and it's kind of crazy out there, but I am glad that all of you made it and are here to worship God together. We have a lot of things going on, so um, bear with me as I get through uh, some of these announcements. Aaron Roos's last Sunday, our last day will be on the 31st. We will be um, looking for a new administrative assistant, but before we do that, let us, um, if you have the opportunity to um, send Aaron an email or stop by or send her a card, I know she would appreciate hearing from each one of you. She has done a, a great job and we're gonna miss her. Um, next Sunday after church, there will be a short meeting of uh, the membership to fill you in on some things happening. And um, it is our gather us in time. So if you can give us a few minutes before you go down for some sweet treats, that would be fantastic. The church council will be meeting Monday via Zoom at 6.30 p.m. Please mark your calendar. Um, on the 31st, I believe it's in your bulletin, I'm, I'm looking for it. Um, yes, it is about the United Methodist split. There's a lot of questions, and I'm going to tell you straight up, if you think you know what's going on, you don't, because even the powers that be don't know what's going on. There's a lot that hasn't been decided, and there is a lot of misinformation. I have invited another pastor to come here to talk to you about it. So that'll be Wednesday, the 31st. It is in person because I recognize a lot of people can't do Zoom, but it's at 630. And if you have questions in advance that I can give to, to uh, Pastor Scott, he will um, take a look at them and be able to mold it into his discussion. So I invite you to come and be a little more educated. Like I said, everything is constantly changing, and I, I want you to understand a little bit better. Are there other announcements? Did I miss anything? There's a lot of things in the bulletin. I invite you to take a look at them. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God.
Will you please rise as we center ourselves for worship? In you, O oh God, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. For you, O oh Lord, are my hope, my trust, O oh Lord, from my youth. Please remain standing as we join together in the affirmation of faith. We believe in the long night of the soul, the spaces and times when despair weighs on us like a blanket. We believe those seasons of life are real and that each and every one of us experiences them. We refuse to believe that pain and suffering Hold the last word, for we believe in Jesus of Nazareth, who was betrayed and bloodied so many years ago, and whose narrative didn't stop there. So while we are here, again, at the foot of the cross, knee deep in despair, and face to face with pain, we profess. We believe in the sunrise, we believe in the power of gathering together. We believe that phone calls and hugs can make a difference. We believe that life is not fair, but is overflowing with love. We believe that we cannot go this path alone. We believe that even here, even on this day, God is drawing near. Amen. standing as we join together in singing our first hymn.
seated. Now is the time of sharing our joys and our concerns. Ben. Awesome. I'm really glad. Um, ben said he has a couple of unspoken prayer requests, but he has a joy because he finished his first year at the VA and he's going to be in a couple weeks beginning his second year. So we're excited for him. Other joy, Mary Ann. Mm. Yeah, um, Mary Ann said she just learned um, the daughter of one of her neighbors was just diagnosed with cervical cancer and will be going through some treatment. So please keep her in your prayers. Her name? Do you have a name? Up here. Christine, be in prayers for Christine. Got it. Ron. Yeah. Yeah. Ron is they Ron and Connie just got back from traveling and um, they want to raise some folks up who um, some elderly folks who, who are, you know, folks who are caring for them and that they're in pain and, and just to give them the strength they need. Is that, did I capture that right? Okay. Other joys whom I'm, oh, Casey. Prayers for back to school Oh, prayers for back to school. Parents. Teachers, bus drivers, yeah. Yeah, there's kids. Kids, yes. Debbie. Who? Shut up. Are you keeping secret? Is this why you and Ben broke up? Is this why, like, there's a divide? There's a family divide? That's wonderful. Is it really? Why aren't we seeing this? Like, like I feel hurt? You have to bring it in. We have to have show and tell. Congratulations. That's awesome. I'm really, that's wonderful. Ben, you need to like make up. Yeah, all right. We'll pray about it. We'll add it to the prayer list. Peg. Did you say her name was Martha? What was her name? Martha. Martha. That, okay. 
Um, please pray for Peg's sister-in-law. She's just turned 88. She's had several mini strokes. Please, please hold her in prayer. Brian. Brian's um, friend um, was in a car accident and um, his condition, uh, he coded a few times and his condition is still, he woke up, but his condition is still serious. His name is Josh. Please hold him um, and his girlfriend in prayer. And please hold Brian in prayer. We'll be hearing more about it, but he has a surgery scheduled for October, right? But um, hold him in prayer as uh, they begin that journey um, before, before surgery. We will keep you in prayer. Sandy. So continue to pray for the Pattersons. Um, Joyce fell and broke a wrist. She didn't need surgery, but um, they, they definitely need healing. They definitely need healing. Other joys and concerns? Let's pray. Sometimes when I hear the rain falling, it feels as if they are tears. When we have pain and hurting, the rain just feels like tears. And sometimes when the rain's falling, especially when it's falling hard, it feels, God, like you are washing away the injustice, the things that are just wrong, the things that make us ache. You are raining down your grace and your love and your forgiveness. And you are helping us to grow, even though we can't see it in the storm. You have heard our voices this morning, whether they were out loud or silent. Bring us new life. Bring us hope. Bring us peace. Renew us for the journey ahead. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before we get to scripture, I forgot a joy. Welcome back, Audrey. It is good to see you and have you here. Good morning. Uh, the scripture reading today is from Luke chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it to water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at the, all the wonderful things being done by him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? God, take us in, into your arms. Allow us to feel safe, protected, and belonging to you. Amen. This is one of those scriptures that are put in front of you and you go, well, now what? Because the reality is this morning, I may say something that offends you. I may say something that challenges you. I may say something that you don't like. Sometimes I read the Bible and I read things that I don't like and that challenges me and frustrates me and confuses me. I believe that it is the Holy Spirit at work. And just because we're challenged doesn't mean we change our mind, and just because we're confused doesn't mean we have to stick with everything that we were taught that sometimes, sometimes, there are tools that God uses to push us forward. That's what's happening in this scripture this morning. Jesus is in the synagogue. And he is teaching. And because he's in the synagogue, there is a certain protocol. A certain expectation. You know, that's the thing you, you we we come into church 
and we're expecting certain things. But in walks a woman, and it says it is a woman with a spirit. But she has been crippled for 18 years. And immediately when we hear the word crippled, we are thinking of disability. And maybe she did. Maybe she was crippled over. But there are other kinds of disabilities, other kinds of challenges. And 18 years is a long, long time. She's bent over, unable to stand up straight, and Jesus sees her, sees who she is, and calls out to her. I see you. I see who you are. Now, this woman has said nothing. She's asked for nothing. We don't know who she is. She just walks in. This story, by the way, only appears in the Gospel of Luke. And there is something about this story that clearly Luke thought was important. And she stands up straight. But those in the synagogue are like, you shouldn't be doing that. This is the Sabbath. You have no right to heal her. Now, there are things that are in the Bible that say there are certain things that you shouldn't be doing on the Sabbath. But Jesus challenges them and says, you know, if your animals are thirsty or hungry, you certainly take care of them. Because that's in the Bible, too. But it's funny how sometimes we choose to, to pick things out that serve our purpose. Jesus wasn't concerned that it was the Sabbath. He was concerned about the woman came in who had been crippled for 18 years. And as I said, maybe it was a physical disability and you can't even begin to imagine the pain of someone with a physical disability. But there are people that we meet that don't give eye contact. They can't give eye contact because they're ashamed. They're ashamed of something. Or maybe they have a disability, like autism, that prevents them from looking in their, your eyes because that's part of their disability. They can't look at you in the eyes. We have people that we encounter in our lives that don't look us in the eyes. And I mean really look us in the eyes. And maybe some of you have some sort of shame that prevents you from looking at someone else, from being completely honest with who you are. I believe I've told these next two stories before, but I also believe they're worth telling again. My son, AJ, was diagnosed at two years old with autism. He had lost the ability to communicate. 
And I was told by his early intervention team that he would never talk. That while I was taking him to early intervention, there was no way that this child could or would talk. And I said, my son is two years old. Do not ever tell me what he can't do. I am only interested in setting goals for him and working towards them. To which she said it was a shame that I was unwilling to face reality. And that may be true, because I was unwilling to believe that he would never speak. She told me to learn sign language, and I did. But I use sign language as a tool to get him to talk. And when he was three, he went to a different school, and I said to the speech therapist, will he ever talk? And she said, how determined are you? I said, very. And she said, well, then let's get to work. She saw AJ. She saw who he was and what he could be. And there were no guarantees. There's no guarantees in life. But she didn't see him as hopeless. She saw in AJ the possibilities. Now, for those of you who know AJ, you know that my prayer is now, shut up. <laughs> he talks a lot, all the time. The second story is when I was called to ministry, I wanted to be a pastor in a church. There are two types of pastors in the United Methodist Church, uh, uh, and what's called an elder, which is what I am right now, and a deacon, and a deacon does specialized ministry, whether it's campus ministry, which is what I was in at the time, or music, or, or um, youth, or children's ministry, and I was told that because I had an autistic son, this was all going on at the same time, that I shouldn't be an elder in the church because it was more important for me to care for my son, that I should be a deacon because I wouldn't be able to dedicate the time to be an elder. We do not know the story of this woman, but the fact that she couldn't stand up straight, and y'all think about it, bent over like this, bent over maybe even further, whether it be because of shame or whether it be because her body didn't allow her to rise, and yet Jesus still saw her and healed her. And all the people were worried about in church, in the synagogue, was that he was healing on the Sabbath. That's all they were worried about. They were worried about the rules. Just like forget the rules. But wait a minute, it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible, folks. What are you doing? 
But what's more important? What's more important? What matters more? Are you so worried about these things that prevent you from caring for God's people? In Hebrews, um, which we didn't read today, but it is in the lectionary. Look at you moving over. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Sometimes she can tell when I'm done. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I got a little more to go, but I'm just, I'm messing with you. But in Hebrews, it says, you have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest. And the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word was spoken to them. The scripture goes on and says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaking, shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable Reverent, acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for indeed our God is a consuming fire, a fire. that destroys things that gets in the way of the work of God and allows us to begin again. If you are filled with shame, if you are crippled by your past, if you are crippled by something that someone told you you can't or you shouldn't, Jesus sees you. Stand up and be seen and be consumed by the love of God. Amen. Will you please rise as we sing our next hymn?
Receive God's blessing. Your chains are gone. God's mercy reigns. God is yours forever. Go in peace. <laughs>